Welcome to the EIU Online Symposium on Exponential Personal Growth. Today's date is the 2nd of February, 2022. And we'll now continue on with our next presenter, Sister Mary Concilia, Miriam Pillai. Yes. yes. And uh, um, how are you today? Um, okay, thank you, doctor. It and I wish ev every, everybody a good morning because in my country it is 1.30 a.m. Thursday we had begun. It's 1.30 a.m. She's from S Sri Lanka. Yes. So I think you might be actually the same time zone as Dr. Ramesh Bhatt. Uh, maybe. I'm not quite sure. Close. It's close. Yes, it's close. But yes, it is in the middle of the night there. Yeah. <laughs> And they have problems with the internet connection right now in Sri Lanka, that there's yeah. power outages throughout the day. Yes. So the so during the night seemed to be the best time, she said, to actually. That's right. <laughs> it doesn't get disturbed. Yes. And uh, people are sleeping, so the electricity is freely coming in. So that is the time I really wanted. Thank you very much for adjusting the time according to my request. Thank you so much for staying up so late. <laughs> um, my presentation, that is my topic is um, the uh, exponential, the self-exponential growth. So when I begin on this topic, my first question comes, what is exponential growth? Exponential growth, is a pattern of data. And that shows greater increases from the original amount in number and in or in size. To be, sorry, by consistent rate to the power of time, creating the curve of self exponential function. So here I have mentioned almost four values. So it is a great, uh, the data shows a great in, increases. And it is from the original amount. Of, and or it shows the increases in number and in size by constant rate, um, consistent rate to the power of time. So that is what is uh, uh, the almost the definition of the exponential growth. The environmental uh, scientists have presented two concepts. That is, one is exponential growth, the other one is logistic growth. The exponential growth is, uh, we will see per capita, that is the population of a per capita growth rate doesn't change, even if population gets very large. And this is represented in, uh, in the form of mathematical representation, d and divided by dt equal to rate patch. And uh, there's um, uh, increases in a very, all the time doubling all the time. Now I can take this as an example to make uh, everyone to understand a pathologist, he, in his test, pathology test in the hospital follows the concept of exponential data and uh, in order to grow the macro, uh, microbes in, his, uh, in their sample, uh, he has extracted. So what's happening, he, say for example, he puts thousands microbes in one bottle, in an, uh, they, uh, they okay, grow very fast. <laughs> And as a result, the 1,000 becomes 2,000 in an hour, and the next hour it comes 4,000, and the following hour it comes 8,000. So this is what exponential growth. Then we see in nature, population may grow exponentially for some period, but they will ultimately be limited by resource availability because it gets, uh, resources get distribution. In logistic growth, that is the second concept that we spoke about. In logistic concept for growth, 
the population per capita growth rate gets smaller and smaller as population size approaches the maximum imposed by the limited resources found in the environment. This is what they call carrying capacity, which they represent by the capital letter K. This you find here, per capita growth gets smaller as it approaches its uh, uh, maximum, and then imposed by the limited resources one finds in the environment. Now, I will move on to the fourth, uh, uh, sorry, in the exponential growth produces J-shaped curve, excuse me. That is the logistic growth presents the shape, S-shape in its curve. The curve will be in X-shape. So the exponential growth rate of the population accelerates in the population size, and in the uh, uh, the growth rate becomes lesser and lesser, smaller and smaller in the logistic uh, growth. Now let me move on to the fifth slide because there I get uh, in this slide I have already mentioned in my definition. Uh, the exponential growth increases in number at all size in a constant uh, growing rate. So that we would find in, the, in this uh, slide. Uh, as I said already in exponential growth, the population per capita growth stay at the same level, regardless of the population size, which make it, making it grow faster until it becomes large and the resources get limited. Now, the spiral spire model is a study. That is a fifth uh, slide. This study comes from the uh, positive psychology and uh, happiness and used for the successful exponential growth of this method. It was popularized by a Harvard professor uh, called uh, Ben Shah. That's exact. And this method is, uh, is given to cultivate one's positive mindset and find happiness in life because mindset is the key factor in uh, self-exponential growth uh, that pushes forth self-confidence and we'll come to that in the later. This exponential growth has many components. So uh, many aspects of it uh, that uh, we need to take into consideration. One is social relationship. The other one is intellectual development, cognitive development, physical development, emotional development, and spiritual development. I would explain very shortly everything. Uh, social rela relationship. Human beings are bo born and bred, and they die in the lap of society. Never one alone. We know what happened to the bull child. The child that has been taken by bull into the jungle, and how that child became one of the animals, like, and when it was brought up, how he could come as the perfect human being. So man is a social animal and he has to be in the society. So, so social life is something very important. And so what theories say about this, about social life? We will see that. The interpersonal theory of uh, Taliban and the sociometric theory by uh, Leary and Go and um, uh, the, the terror management, terror management theory by Greenberg. All these theories propose that perceived quality of people's relationship influence self-esteem. We know self-esteem is the most important thing to 
push the person towards reaching his goal. If the self-esteem is not there in the person, he cannot move further on forward. Then we see the eighth slide. Uh, social relationships are valuable and it is important. I'm sure many of us, next, next really one, uh, spending a lot of time with people undergoing personal growth. And so, if it happens, so, um, you will soon be influenced by the relationship of those people who undergo a lot of personal growth. The consequence of this is that it is, you are going to grow faster in your, uh, in any aspect of life. You know, the social, uh, the interpersonal theory, the um, social relationships help. This, uh, um, this exponential growth to um, exponential evolution in this social uh, relationship is not passive. Exponential growth requires investment. One cannot just sit mute and then get exponential uh, growth. In my case, I had to sacrifice so many nights uh, sleep, going out for a holiday or going for my ministry. These things I have to sacrifice in order to complete my PhD success. So likewise, if you want uh, to achieve something, you have decided and determined to achieve something, that means you need to commit to yourself and also be passionate about it. It is then that shows that you are uh, very seriously committed and the commitment and the self-esteem is high and that will give a push to the self-exponential growth. Excuse me. Yeah, I am rather <laughs> down with flu, so my throat gets dry. Uh, sorry. Uh, the exponential, as I said, is not passive. And one needs to sacrifice a lot to have success in life. Further self-esteem predict uh, behavior in relationship. S such that a person who has a high level of esteem may engage in relationship that enhances the behavior. On the contrary, a person who has a low self-esteem may engage in relationship that will damage his behavior. So both are there. So you will see how the social relationship helps and how the person who, uh, who uh, joined the group, the different types of group, either he develops his social exponential growth or he destroys. That is also part of his community. Uh, there are some of us who ask, who am I? to command a leadership role and land happy relationship for the others to succeed? And this is something very unhealthy question that comes up. What is expected here if we really want to achieve exponential growth in our life is something that we need to re uh, release this negative thought of uh, fear, doubt, um, selfless, uh, I mean, self-worth is, is not there, low self-esteem, such are, uh, these are mind-forged manacles. Wordsworth did speak in his poem, London, mind-forged manacles that has to be removed out of the mind so that a new mindset, a new paradigm shift comes in there, which gives the energy, the stamina, the confidence to move forward for the exponential growth. 
the mindset, then one may ask, it goes on, in, I'm still on the relationship, uh, social relationship. What is mindset? Mindset is a pattern of habits or beliefs and the way of consumption is structured by oneself or himself. Yeah, so the expert from business, leadership, and medicals, engineers, and all these people exalt very well much the uh, positive mindset. And they advise the positive mindset should begin at very early, even as the daybreak, as the person gets up, he should get up with positive mindset. In fact, as we get up, we are alive. Prior to that, uh, 10 minutes, 15 minutes before, or half an hour before, we didn't know whether we are alive or dead. So or actually then it becomes to me, even personally to me, I, as I get up, I thank the Lord for the life that I enjoy, for the new day that I, I have, so that it's going to be a joyful day. And this positive mindset will open the door for the other. And uh, uh, the psychologists say such positive thoughts trains the brain to notice, to recognize the good things that come out of the state. And as this repeated action changes the uh, neuro pathways to help you to see the uh, challenges, not as challenges, but as opportunities. As opportunities for, for one to see, um, want to see that it is uh, to take up as, as a, a learning factor, as well as enjoy the day rather than claiming for what is not there for you. So now I go on to the emotional intelligence. The, the, before, just prior to that, I would say the result of the treadmill test, Elizabeth de Mo and her companions, they analyzed treadmill test for 10 long years annually, and they found how the social uh, relationship uh, alleviates distress and fear. And pointing to the idea of relationship, better quality of relationship are beneficial for people's self-esteem. So how self-esteem is an important factor in this. Now the second part is another one uh, in the higher model is emotional intelligence and I'm going to get short because the time is fast running. Self-perception, that is how I look myself, with a low image, high, very high image, which leads to um, interior, inferiority complex or superiority complex, all that thing, then how whether I have I reached the self-actualization, emotional awareness, what is happening to me right now, is it fear? Is it anger that is taking over me? All this. And also second one, self-expression. How do I express my emotions? Third one, interpersonal relationship. Am I able to give my relationship, give and receive? Or am I only able to get on? So these things. And also decision-making, emotional decision-making, right decision, stress management. These are the aspects of the emotional intelligence. And Daniel Goleman speaks very well about this. Then we go on to see how to grow uh, emotional in emotional intelligence. We need to connect ourselves to the emotion because it's cognitive and intelligence. They sit aside and watch what's happening to emotion. Emotion plays, uh, plays well with uh, physiology. So, uh, they need to, con uh, any, anyone need to connect oneself with emotion. Reduce stressful situation to help us. Third, we think before act, cognitive, uh, cognition come to play. Take responsibility, intelligence and cognition. Demonstrate humility and humor and control no, no, nonverbal communication. And how do we manage emotion? Managing emotion, first, I hope, first of all, I have got to know my own emotion. In which emotion am I right now? Am I my giving? And then knowing others' emotion. And how do we uh, manage? And that is uh, when a person who is uh, uh, 
uh, very defensive, one need not worry about uh, this because it is a person who gives rise to his feelings and interprets negatively whatever other person may say. So it has to be managed by him. But still, we have the charity to understand his emotions and then to help. But how do we do? First, by, by noticing the behavior. Person who is in uh, to, or fail to notice what is happening, the one we have to do is to know what is happening with an individual right at the moment. And then I could ask even myself, what are they doing with their hands? How is his voice uh, changing? Is it loud? How is his face really changes? Is it in color, was in color reddish? And uh, how is his eyes? Is it tearing, very angry? So these things, if I go on concentrating on this factor while listening, then I function both as an interpreter, as a listener. And that way I help him to take a little more time to think uh, how he could, uh, whether what he does is, uh, is on emotion, is it okay? Then the second point that I could do is to remain calm. Whatever happens, I remain calm. And this will enable uh, me to think at that time, reason, to think whether the reason has gone out of the back of the door. Third one is to use reflecting statement. I can see that you are upset. So such type of uh, um, statement, validate there, uh, validate them with reflection. Then ask questions, then do something physical, physical movement. That will physical movement will immediately remove the concentration that the speaker has kept in his emotional state will be removed from there to the logis logical part of the brain. So as a result, uh, the person is given a little time and also make him to know, tell the story or ask questions. Then slowly, if he begins to say the story, already we have brought him to the, uh, I mean, to the lowest level. Identify what they value. When they, uh, when they speak, uh, tell about their story, then we, if we listen carefully, we will know what they lack and what they wanted and they never got. So such is the thing. And so now we go on to ways to develop emotional intelligence. We had to connect thought our emotions, reduce stressful situation, think before you act, and uh, and also to take uh, think before you act and control verbal communication, nonverbal communication. And in this, we also have to motivate ourselves because motivation is something. Goldman states that they. It is the most a key point that is necessary for emotional intelligence to have that uh, working together and that connects with cognitive and as well as with um, intelligence. So that once man has the inter interconnection of this, then he is in the right position to help think correctly and work towards the exponential growth. I move on to the uh, next uh, intelligence and cognition. Intelligence versus cognition uh, in the motivation, uh, the, in the spy model. Uh, cognition is something deals with logic, which is supposed to affection, which deals with emotion. Whereas intelligence has the power to comprehend, to understand, as well as has the capacity to learn very high things. And cognition is very uh, rational and rational thought for it. It forms evidences and memory, factual, all these type of things. Whereas intelligence is analyzes thoughts and ideas and see how they live in the environment. So these two are almost interdependent in each other, but slight different. And that is how they work together to help us in the uh, exponential um, growth. Then I come into uh, uh, the, the cognition in the cognitive cognitive development. Uh, cognition uses our we use our mind 
to see, we see the multiple potential solutions are there for one problem, yet it scientifically analyzes and sees about the world around them. Cognition will always think big, dream big, believe big. And therefore the result will be very big. So thinking more scientifically about the world around. So that is what cognitive actually. Cognition you see uh, when it is acting together, it's it all it shows in group and also the discovery and the new things. And you will see uh, the pie chart shows about rational thought, physical proofs, reassurance, evidence, almost like I was thinking it may be, I'm just jumping, men are more of cognitive and women are more of emotion. And then we need to have uh, come to a balance. So women need to take more of cognitive, intelligent, working integrated and together. Then we go on to the next uh, resil mental resilience. Uh, these are all uh, factors that help to, uh, to push up the exponential um, growth. Psychologists de define uh, resilience as the process of adapting well to the phases of in cases of adversity, tragedy, or maybe trauma, or some family great problem, maybe a divorce, maybe a day, child's death, or whatever it is. Uh, resilience means like a ball, when it falls onto the ground, it jumps back, bounces back. And that's how the mind, our mind should really function if you want to be healthy. So what happens is, uh, this, when these things come, resilience comes, pressure involves bouncing back, this involves resilience bouncing back from these difficult experiences. That can involve profound growth. And we see here, how, how do we face these challenges? Like yourself, I must think big of myself, I must like myself. Try something new, be creative. And I should set goals, let go and ask for it, not to live in the past. Let go and ask for help and also count on my friends and have to change. So these are things which I need to think about uh, in this resilience, uh, mental resilience factor. And these parallelly have to be taken or maybe uh, at least one at a time must be taken to cultivate so that resilience really uh, becomes sound as well as more solid in our practical. How do we build a, uh, a connection? We need to build connection. Now, um, building resilience takes time and inter intentionality. Without intention, we cannot build resilience. I must be conscious about it. I'm going to bounce back from this. Then also connection and wellness also needed. Wellness in, in physical, mental wellness, physical wellness is needed. So, uh, to increase my capacity for resilience to weather, there are certain uh, strategies. That is one is to prioritize, prioritize my relationship. And second is foster wellness, mental wellness and physical wellness. Take care of my body. Avoid negative outlets. Outlets, you now some people take, for, uh, take alcohol to relieve, and then some people go for some substances. So avoid those, be proactive. We can, uh, what can I do to, about problem, to solve this problem myself? We think about it. Move forward with my goals and face challenges and begin to like myself, whatever I do. And also I have to maintain uh, all the time, uh, keep in my mind the thoughts of being uh, proactive, maintain help, helpful outlook, learn from the past, all these things are coming. Now we move on to physical wellness and financial and physical fitness. Physical wellness in today's world, in the current 2022, in uh, so 22 million this world, wellness is well understood by people. And especially in European countries, they will go for work, uh, gym or whatever exercise and what they do in group. 
that has its uh, benefits. And um, uh, others may be taking at home with some sort of uh, uh, instrument, some sort of a uh, game, uh, uh, apparatus to reduce their, some of them are very conscious of their weight, some of them conscious of their beauty, some of them conscious of their uh, maintaining health. So all this is happening in the wellness. And so one needs to, uh, one need to uh, prepare this wellness uh, in physical uh, and physical fitness and their effectiveness must be looked into. Then comes to, we are, the, we are a three part of whole. That means we are made of spirit, soul, and body. We are not just body. We are so the psychological, um, yeah, here, here comes about the physical wellness here, the positive competitiveness and self exponential growth, which helps how the physical fitness helps in the ex uh, come, uh, exponential growth. Uh, now I move on to the next one spirit, body, and soul. Psychological and scientific research have proved that meditation relieves stress reduces blood pressure, enhances concentration, and makes us feel calm, joyful, and uplifted, contented, peaceful. This comes by, they, so even scientists have uh, proved this. So now what happens is how it reduces stress. Stress curtails the uh, cell uh, uh, growth potential. The, the, uh, this, uh, uh, it was against it. And concentration makes us feel calm. And, um, also, the meditation makes us feel calm and joyful and uplifted. Meditation leads to spiritual awareness. And so, there is a, always, I think, uh, all religion practices uh, this meditation. And uh, there are a number of exercises and number of uh, methods used by different uh, religions and how they bring into the spirituality into that. So what they want is we have to, now see so here what I have just mentioned is only one, to close our eyes very gently, not very, very, very hard, and half closed in a way to do, uh, so prevent us from going to sleep. Attention should be fully alert. Focus eyes about eight to 10 inches in the darkness in front of you on the horizontal plane. Repeat a calming word, any word, peace or light or Jesus, anything, whatever it is. And repetition brings in a sort of calmness and slowing down even everything in the life. And uh, that way, uh, uh, a connection with abstract, with our supreme being is made, you know, take place, isn't it? So, what we have to do is that to have this a healthy mind, healthy body, and healthy spirit. To help, have healthy mind, what we should do is the brain should be exercised uh, regularly. As we, that means we become conscious of every act. So, and that creates a positive mindset is really um, brings in. Uh, brings in positive my mindset, brings in uh, that part, uh, thoughts, gratitude, feeling of joy, all these are coming in. So that uh, um, healthy mind will bring that. Then a healthy body requires a, a nutritious food, maintaining physical balance and health, and also a good sleep and good work, job, so that it gives present uh, contentment. And healthy spirit, being spiritual uh, is being centered and having uh, an understanding that you are part of something higher than you, something higher, yourself, higher than yourself. Facilitating a healthy spirit includes being part of a community so that I am ready to serve my community with others to be sharing my life with them and to give without expecting anything tangible in return. A healthy spirit requires love, love not only for yourself, now for the others. Okay. 
So, and the excellent Holy, uh, Holy Spirit also instantly now we talk about uh, what is the relationship between body and mind, what is the relationship between the mind and spirit, and how is the soul and body. So these things are coming into um, questions. Uh, I will have to almost finish this quickly. Uh, soul is soul can be regarded as one's um, one's conscience, and the spirit can be as as a, a, a love, one's life force. So like this, all these things lead to academic you know, excellence. Now, what is excellence? Prior academic excellence is that it requires um, you have to set a high standard and you have to pursue after it and eventually realize the goal. Those are the three things. And of course, this also uh, increase, has uh, respect to other culture, respect to other religion, high, um, also maintain um, human values and human rights, democracy. These are things that automatically comes in and self-exponential growth works towards all for the harmony in everything. Not only with the harmony within myself, harmony in the society. And uh, I speak about this uh, Buddha, the spirit, uh, spirit, uh, spirit and soul. In Buddhism, what they say, the soul known as Atma is the conscience of a living being. In Hinduism, soul known as Atman is explained through self of individual. And in Christianity, soul is non-physical entity, but no, integrally no. connected to the body. No. With the body, no, no. Its characteristics are described. No. So this way, now we will see, I have already said education towards culture of peace. This project comprises four parts, education for peace, human rights, democracy, international understanding, and tolerance. Promotion of human rights and democracy and the struggle against discrimination as it happens in our country. And it is in a very chaotic state in our country. Cultural pluralism and intercultural dialogue. So I have here given some cultural symbols from, uh, from the USA and uh, some symbols of Japanese culture and religious symbols there. So these are uh, these are the thing and ac academic excellence. Then now what comes is the pictorial conclusion. Now I'm going to conclude. What happens is the wheel. Uh, you will see it depicts all. Yeah, it depicts all the all. Uh, thumbs up the self exponential growth and it depicts all the points that we have discussed the spiritual values function as a basic foundation interconnecting all sectors of life namely social physical um, cultural academic economic financial environmental all these emotion and emotional development all these are brought into harmony and connected by uh, spiritual values. That's exactly what uh, human rights, uh, when he speaks about it in the values, uh, 30 principles, he speaks about on that. And all the values are also here. And that's another religion, I would say. I have already written in my, in my uh, thesis. What the human value, what UNO declares all those values are found in all religions, the value system. But uh, it's a pity that religions, that, or religion don't pay much attention to those values. Uh, so UNO is repeating that. So these are the things what I would say, and what is uh, uh, interconnecting all sectors of life, social, physical, career, cultural, academic, financial, environmental, and emotional development. The next one is, is whether exponential growth is not particularly only to one sector, one field. No. It, the, it domains is varied. In any situation, it can, uh, you can have the exponential growth. It can be agriculture, the environmental, it can be economic finance and banking, it can be uh, on science uh, and, and anything, maybe on business level, leadership level, exponential growth can take place in anything. 
and it is in everyone's care whether you will want to be uh, an exponential growth in your field then you have to think big prepare yourself prepare myself for towards what it is. so uh, that is what um, uh, i have to say the pluralistic part of it as well as individualistic attention to each of these and uh, uh, these um, uh, these sector section these fragments that is all different different part of it are differently uh, developing yet they are integrated and they are given freedom in space and time to develop but interconnection is there brings wholeness to everything so thank you i have finished So here it is. Uh... Thank you so much, Sister Mary Concelia, for your presentation. You brought up so many ideas. Um, now let's go ahead and turn it to. There's so there's still some more slides. I don't think anybody. Yeah, saw. yeah. <laughs> this is to the. Uh... Do you want to go through? Start thinking big. Yes. Uh, if you want to. If I wish to become great, that is, it's only in another word to grow more exponential, to have more exponential growth in my life. Trust yourself that you can do. You know, I very well, I used to say when I was sitting for many studies, there was uh, permission was uh, delaying. I said, I wrote two papers, two small papers. I will complete my MPhil. And I put one on, on fixed on my bed, mirror, other one on my bed. So each time when I saw that played on my mind, I will. So positive mind was already set up there. And I was able to finish it, although my uh, time, I mean, the whole period took uh, uh, for me to complete my PhD only now, I got permission to do. Thanks to God, thank you, AIU, thank you, everybody. So it's, uh, yeah, you have to believe that you can do it. Change your old mindset. I can't, I, I'm not able. Think positively, always. Dream your goal and resilient, be resilient. Respect others and seek help. Have humility as well as also sincerity and respect. Face the challenges, courage. I can, I will do it, I'll face. These are good for me. Try something new, being creative, persevere. Commitment is needed, loyalty is needed, hard work. It will push you and you have to, you will be challenged, but you have to go through. We can say when we write about it, we do a lot of uh, experience. Commit yourself to reach the set goal. On the half way, we say, no, it's so hard and I can't. No. Once you commit, persevere, continue, determine. That's what exactly if you want to wish to become. Thank you so much, <clears throat> Sister Mary Concilia. So tell us, how are you applying all of this to your own life and your own vocation? Um, uh, first of all, I spend time in my meditation. And there guy comes in my, my desire, what I want to do what I have to do, what, what is my right to do to the community, to the people and all. And what do I need? A, a, a reflective and inner journey takes place. It is there I find my, um, my goal or decide or determine my goal. And that's how I learned. And now, um, when I did my BA and MA in linguistics and MA in literature, then I finally had the chance to do my uh, PhD at my senior age. Uh, sorry. Okay. I'm sorry. looking around to see who has a question. 
So, uh, no, I just wanted to say, and these things help me uh, to work and gives me the boost to go forward. And God, as well as people now, because my relationship with the others is more respectful and kind. And also there are times I say no means no. So I can give an example. Um, in school, there was nobody uh, wished to, wanted to uh, work for me. What the rector wanted is a operator to be done for the, to mark the centenary of the college. So there were about 15 English teachers and three um, um, music teachers. And they were very senior teachers. They had worked for 20 years, 25 years. I was just two years entered their, uh, their diocesan college. And they refused. Then Father Rector asked me, Sister Vakansilia, what do you say? I could not commit myself, but still I said, I'll try Father. And getting an operator by Gilbert and Sullivan, uh, in Sri Lanka, there is no English, not much they pay attention to English. So it was rather difficult and I couldn't get it. So I was able to get it from England and there was no script. I listened in the night, I played the disc. I got all the scripts within three nights and wrote it and printed it and gave it to the students, selected the students for the part and taught them, selected a, a choreographer, the director and the musician, all these things, but father never gave us a cent. We did, that is, I, I motivated my students, all O-level and A-level students, and we worked hard. Within two months, we staged that in a public theater, and we were able to get uh, seven lakhs net profit, and the balance for uh, costumes, Hall charge, electricity charge, directors charge 150,000, choreographer charge 50,000, musicians charge 50,000, all these, the students, myself, and parents. I, I, I was thanks to God, I was able to bring them together as one, motivated them, and we pushed together, we achieved. So it's possible. And that's how I did it in my life. I can read a number of stories of my life uh, because I'm already old. Uh, in that sense, I can give, even now, today, I'm able to do, I'm the only one who has done PhD at this stage in my congregation here, and they are, it, I'm happy that I'm able to be an exemplary to the sisters or to other students who are in very young age, find difficult to just, mm, that is, oh, that is hard like that. So, uh, if you want, you have to commit. So, that is in my life, and that's how I practice. I think Francis Kanu has a question. Yes. Let me unmute. Can you hear me now? Yes. Yeah, in reference to exponential growth, when do we realize that we have reached that saturation point, that um, the goals that we have set, we've accomplished them? But you have others that will constantly set goals. Is there a saturation, a saturation point, or age wherein one will realize that um, I've reached that point? Saturation points, as for me, now you set a goal to achieve exponential. Sorry, exponential growth is uh, it's very very vast, and in every situation it can be applied. So you, I take a goal in a particular space, a particular uh, field. When I reach what I wanted, I mean, by my hard work, by going to others, respecting others, seeking help and all the rest, what goes with that. In that level, when I come with peaceful mind, contented mind, that I have done something to the society, I have uh, given my, uh, what I have studied to the society, and also it gives me joy that I, I, I was able to do this. And there comes the saturated point, saturation point at the particular aspect of that field. Again, you may start another goal and the other goal will take you to another place. So that is why they said this um, exponential project uh, growth is a mold that can be 
uh, that can be taken to any situation, any situation in life. And so saturation comes at every situation when you reach the, the first feet. And also the divinity in you will give you more and more a, a harmony, a harmonious feeling with everything. So that is saturated one. As for so, me, it is so are you implying that um, the concept here is continuation point and that um, yes. age yes. is the only retirement factor here that will stop you? Uh, no, the age for me, uh, it does not stop me. Chronic, chronological age doesn't stop me. In the sense, what I say, I was, I retired at the age of 65. I still continue to work. Others say all the others are really retired and they are at my, my thinking is different because I work till to the last when my body is well, well enough, my mind is well enough, I keep my mind and my body and my spirit. If that is there, there is no retirement. You will find um, sort of a stillness and uh, contentment even at this age. So that means you are growing. We are growing all the time. The growth has no time limit. That's how I see uh, that it has no return. Thank you. Uh, yeah. uh, who else would like to speak? Just raise your hand. Alex. Alex Bupe. Walia. Good morning, sister. And um, again, uh, Dr. Lambert, thank you for affording me this opportunity. Uh, I didn't introduce myself the first time. I'm from Zambia. Um, and I've enjoyed this presentation by Sister Mary Conselia. It has meshed together uh, the spirituality and the psychological side of exponential growth. So for me, my comment really is to say it has covered everything of what one would need to keep going and uh, pushing themselves to keep growing in that exponential setting which we are, we are talking about now, and which is, I think, really necessary for life. So I'm actually encouraged by Sister Mary Conselia for the way she has done a presentation. She has touched everything, psychological, spiritual, and put it together in such a way that it has really encouraged me. Um, I just want to wish to ask which congregation is she from <laughs> and, and is she is she is sister are you sister a spiritual director or a formator <laughs> i'm like sister concilia sorry my lips get cut right so i'm sister concilia belonging to sisters of the holy cross men singing that is where my congregation started in switzerland now you have in Zambia and uh, South Africa, we have our congregation. And also here in Sri Lanka, India, and uh, uh, England, and Ireland, we have in Australia. But unfortunately, not in USA. Okay. Are you a spiritual director, sister? <laughs> yes, I had been. Um, I was a counselor in the provincial council uh, for six years. For nine years, I was a junior director counseling them and directing them uh, and the students. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you for your comments. I think I'm grateful. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, let's go on. Does anybody else want to speak? Uh, Dr. Lambert, can you uh, start my video, please? Uh, who is that speaking? Uh, Jose here, Jose Mayer. Your video? Yes, it stopped. Which video are you talking about? Uh, I wanted to start my video, but it said that I, I, I can't start it because uh, it has been stopped. Hmm, I, I haven't seen any video. Well, okay, let me, let me try again. Okay, it's done. 
I was, I was um, trying to, uh, to get on. I yeah. want to ask Dr. Gonzalez, do you want to speak? Okay. Um, a video? Well, I know we have to get to our next presenter who is Igor Silva. Uh, sorry, I think I'm confusing you. I wanted to uh, to participate, but uh, I couldn't uh, start the video. Yet. So I, I, I pressed on uh, on start video, and the, and the message I got was that I couldn't do it because it was uh, stopped by the horse. But now it's okay, I'm sure. Well, we have to we have to conclude this particular presentation by Sister Mary Concelia, so that we can. Yeah. Can, we can uh, proceed to the next presentation. Yes, yes. So, and uh, and I, I have some questions for Sister for, for Sister Mary. Please. What are your questions? Okay. Uh, uh, Sister Mary, uh, allow me to say uh, congratulations. This is a uh, this is a uh, beautiful work. And uh, I'm really, uh, I'm really touched by your work. So uh, my question here is: uh, first of all, I want to know your your Christianity. Are you a sister? Are you Catholic or or yes. some other Christianity? No, Catholic. I'm, eh? a, I'm a Catholic. Ah, uh, thank you very much. And uh, I, I want I want to go back to uh, mental uh, resilience. And uh, yeah. my question is, how, uh, how can you help heal a mind that cannot adapt? Because looking at the, uh, just one second. Yes, uh, like yourself, adapt to change, uh, count on your friends. And I have everything uh, under control, except on uh, count on your friends. Because of my childhood, how I grew up, I was, uh, I was, I was it's like I was taught, I was pushed away from, uh, from everyone. First of all, from my uh, parents, they were divorced when I was when I was a baby, and I grew up with different uh, different families. I grew up like a like an orphan, but with living parents, and they never liked me. Even when I was young, because they said uh, I was uh, I was a very stupid uh, child from childhood. So I was pushed away from. Uh, from everything, from society, from the love, from family, from friends. And now I find it hard to, uh, to adapt myself to this, uh, to this world here that you've just described. So I'm really touched with uh, mental resilience. And my question is, a mind like that, like, like mine, that finds it hard to, uh, to adapt in the social world like like the one we live today, how can you help me go back and be normal again, like uh, like others? I'm also I'm, I'm also a Catholic. I was baptized, and I have the I have the Eucharist uh, uh, sacrament. But because of the situation of my family, I had no love from my father, no love from my mother grew up with strangers, grew up in farms, working for myself since childhood to support myself. And then I ended up uh, pushing myself away from everything, church, friends, and everyone. I can't even make new friends. And to make matters worse, in the country where I am, sorry, I didn't introduce myself well. I'm, 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 I'm from Mozambique. And from the here, my town where I come from here in Mozambique, for you to, to make friends, it depends on, uh, on your background, from where you, where you come from, or who you grew up with, 
the name of your family, if you are famous or not, if you have money or not. And if you're not that, if not anywhere near that, then it's really hard for you to, uh, to make friends. Ozemiya, you're with family here. We understand, and, yes, we understand and I was, your experience. Yes. And I was going to get there. <laughs> Thank you, Dr. Lambert. And uh, that's another, another reason that, uh, that, that I've learned to communicate since I've come to AIU. That's when I've started learning, learning to speak to people, learning to be free, learning to share ideas. I didn't know all these things because I was afraid, afraid of everything, every word that I said, since my parents said I was a stupid child. So every word that I say is very stupid for everyone. So when I came to AIU, that's when things started getting better. I would say, um, Sister Mary Concelia, do you want to answer this? Um, yes. This is a big uh, complex question, complex things to be there, then it requires <laughs> yeah. time. The only thing what I would say, I appreciate, and it's a sad story, I appreciate your openness and coming out with these things, and this uh, as the uh, person is online to present this. And I think um, I may, I'm, I'm not able to answer this, because it requires a lot of time. And I shall pray yeah. for you at school. And I'm sure AIU, as, as it has brought you up to this level, and you have brought you to this level, not anybody else. So there is still science and strength in you that you will make yourself also happy and a very successful person in life, at least towards the end. Yes. Thank you. Thank you, Sister Mel. If I can and, add. And, uh, and one, one more question. You, you, we, we want you to break paradigms. And you're talking yeah. about a paradigm of your past. You got to break it. You got you to gotta stop it. One of the key elements is forgiveness. Look at it, understand the ignorance, and forgive it. Free yourself. Like um, one of the presenters was saying before, clean your heart. Forgive. Break that paradigm and move on with your life. Thank to you. who That's you are. That is not what they, what everybody said is not who you are. You got to change that paradigm, break it and free yourself and just walk, open that door and walk out yourself, a new person, the person you are. It's right there. You got it within you. Just do it. I would, just like to, I would just like to add, good evening, everybody. This is Audrey from Jamaica. First okay. of all, you don't need peer person's opinions to validate you. All people define you, it's their own frame of reference, their own perspective that they project onto you. Remember that the Lord said you are a royal priesthood. You are a chosen race. You are blessed and highly favored. You are made in his image and likeness. That's who you are. And you have to change that mindset where you start to believe the lies that people tell you. And it comes with accepting who you are. Despite you might have challenges with accepting yourself, but remember that the Lord made you in his image and likeness. You are a masterpiece of his creation. And what people say you are, it's not who you are. And you, 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 there are a lot of wounds there. And the first thing that you have to remember that if you keep looking in the past, then you will become a pillar of salt, like lots of wise, meaning that you will remain stagnant. You will not grow. You will not prosper. You will not expel because you are stuck. It's like you're driving and you drop into a big rut. The car can't move or the engine fall out. And once you start looking behind you, you are going to face serious obstacle in propelling to fulfilling your purpose and maximizing your potential. So that's the first thing you need to tell yourself that the Lord made me, I'm his creation and I'm proud, I'm happy. 
as how he has made me. You are not responsible for who you are in terms of how you were brought up and the condition, but who you become. You have to change that to the willpower, to action, and stop focusing on what people say. Be blessed. There are many of us online here who went through similar circumstances as you did. I suffered from low self-esteem as a child, but at the end of the day, I surrounded myself with positive people. My spiritual aspect was very, very important. I get to know God for myself, draw closer to him. I read a lot. I engage in a lot of self-directed learning, a lot of symposium and webinars and workshops and started writing and pouring to others. So that's my contribution to you. You are beautiful. You are a chosen race. You are blessed and highly favored. You are the head and not the tail. You are above and not beneath. Just remember who the Lord say you are. Okay? Not Thank what you man say you Thank are. You Thank you very much. very much. Okay, Thank I you. think with this, we're going to have to conclude the presentation of Sister Mary Concelia. Jose Mea, you're with family. We're with you. We know what you're going through. We know where you're going. We're going to help you, you get you there. Much. You're with us. We're all together. Um, thank you. Sister thank you. Mary Concelia, thank you so much for your presence, staying up so late at night to do your presentation. <laughs> it's a, thank it's, you, it, thank you so much, Doctor, for being what you are to everyone and enlightening the path to everyone. And in a very special way, I tell Joe, Mia, that I am with you praying for you, things will be all right. And you proceed in the way that you have started. You are shining forth now. God bless you, Mr. Jones. Thank and you. thank you, thank Doctor. You. God bless you and thank you everyone for listening. Thank you. Thank you, Sister Mayor. Thank you very much. Yes.